Hi, gorgeous ones. Welcome back to, I think it's day nine of my daily distraction series. Yes, I am reading from my first book, The Men I've Almost Dated, in the hope that I will help to distract you from what is going on in the world right now, which let's face it, is pretty confronting all around. Anyway, if you want to read along, we're up to page 48. It's, the chapter is called Relationship Amnesia. Okay, let's go. I gained a lot of new friends following my separation and divorce, but I lost a few old ones too. Some were so focused on who I used to be that they couldn't cope with my decision to leave Daniel. Others just couldn't understand the new direction my life was taking. A few were worn out because I felt the need to share everything I was going through. That's what extroverts do. We like to talk things, talk to others in order to work things out. It must have been exhausting for them. My friends were used to the old me, the one in the stable long-term relationship with the nice partner. I wasn't the friend, I was the friend they didn't have to worry about. The one who always had someone to spend the holidays with. Many offered encouraging advice and shared their own dating disaster stories when I recounted my experiences. They were in relationships but could still remember what it was like to be out there. They hadn't yet succumbed to what I call relationship amnesia. This happens when people in a relationship completely forget what it's like to be single and looking for love. People with this condition will make the following types of statements when you share your frustrations about trying to find Mr. Right. You're too guarded. You need to give them a chance. Then there's the comment that drives me absolutely crazy. Your expectations are too high. <laughs> My friend Katie once shared this insight as she looked lovingly across the room at her partner Thomas. I'm pretty sure Katie hadn't settled for Mr. Halfway to what I want when she moved in with him. He clearly met her expectations, whatever they were. I didn't want to settle for something less than what I wanted. I was divorced once and settling sounded like a recipe for another broken relationship. My friend Jane said wanting to be attracted to someone from the start was short-sighted. Sometimes they grow on you when you get to know them, she said. She implied my desire to feel fireworks or at least a strong attraction at the beginning of a relationship was unrealistic. Meanwhile, my newly engaged work colleague Annie questioned my preference for taller men. Maybe your expectations are too high and you should consider shorter men, she said. Maybe you're being unrealistic. Her fiance was taller than her. <laughs> so statistics showed it would be more difficult to find a partner as I got older, so it seemed I should settle for what I could get. I know most of these comments were well-meaning most of the time. My friends wanted me to be happy, like them. However, relationship amnesia meant they'd completely forgotten the expectations and standards they'd had while dating. Hmm. They would shake their heads despairingly at the antics of friends like me, while conveniently forgetting they used to do exactly the same things when they were single. Unfortunately, I'd also acted under the influence of relationship amnesia. My friend Wanda was single for most of my married life. She dated a few men, but nothing ever worked out. She was good looking, intelligent and a funny woman, but just hadn't met the right one. By our late twenties, Wanda was really disheartened by the whole dating scene. I just can't meet anyone, she'd said despairingly as we sat at a local bar one night. There's just no one out there. It was at that moment, while ensconced in my safe, long-term relationship, I offered my advice. You have to try, Wanda, I said helpfully. You have to flirt with them. I do, was her angry response as she stalked away. It was probably one of the most insensitive things I've ever said. It was relationship amnesia at its worst, and Wanda, darling, if you are reading this or hearing this now, I'm really sorry. 
So I'm interested to know, have you been guilty of relationship amnesia? And if so, what is the worst thing that you said to someone when you're in that state? Or what have people who are in relationships said to you when you're single that's been a clear indication of relationship amnesia? I'd love to know. Put your comment below and uh, let's see what we come up with. And until next time, please take care, stay healthy, and I look forward to seeing you all again really soon. Bye for now.